Hey guys and welcome back to a brand new video in today's Sekido Shadows Die Twice video guide we're going to be continuing with our detailed walkthrough. Now we just left off by defeating the boss in the outskirts and today we're actually going to be doing a bit of an optional area which is the Hirata estate before we go into the castle. Now, I actually kind of recommend doing this area before even killing the horse passes but it's completely up to you. Some people even like to do it before killing the Chained Ogre because you will get uh, a fire tool from in here which is incredibly effective against the Ogre. I'm just going to make sure before going in I can't quite remember. Uh, can we upgrade? Can we do anything? I don't think so. Have we done that? How about skill points? What are we like with skill points? I don't think we've got any gourds or anything like that. Oh, we do have a few skill points. Uh, what about um, seeds and stuff? Okay, we don't have anything. I guess we used them all before I leave in, leave in last episode. Uh, one thing I do want to do is uh, use the skill points though. So let's see. So at the moment we've only got one skill tree. We will be getting another skill tree pretty soon. And what I'm going to unlock now is uh, this right here, the Suppress Presence. Uh, because this will give us a bit more of an edge when it comes to, when it comes to stealth kills. Basically, it makes it even harder for the enemies to detect us. We do have one skill point left over, but we're going to leave that. Uh, and we'll explain why uh, probably next episode. But anyway, uh, to get the heat out of state, make sure you get the bell off of the uh, NPC in the outskirts. The, the woman that we told her that we was her son. And she will give us this bell that we can use here in the temple to get to a memory. This is actually in the past heat at her estate. Now, like I said, I kind of recommend coming to this area maybe before before killing the horse boss. There's a little item behind here. Before killing the horse boss, because obviously there is a main boss in this area. And apart from three more tools, uh, we're actually going to have more attack power from the, from the main boss. And a few more beads. I'm not sure if there's enough beads to... Um, I don't like... We don't have any beads left over, so... I'm just trying to remember if we actually have four beads or three beads. I think it may actually be three. No, um, it's three or four beads from in here. So I think it's three though. But yeah, we would get that. Um, we would get the uh, the attack damage boost from the boss before the horse boss, which is very useful. Uh, if you want, you talk to this NPC here, and he'll basically tell you like what's going on, what year we're in, just so you guys know it is a matter of fact in memory. Even though I think it leaves that quite clear at the start. Uh, but let's see, before we head across this bridge, we are actually going to uh, jump in the water. Because on Sekiro, you can actually swim. And you can actually dive later on. But we'll be talking about diving later on. So, uh, we're going to kill these carps. Because you get treasure carp scales. And they're actually quite important. I would get as many as you can. Uh, I probably won't show... This is another one right here, by the way. I probably won't show where all 42, I think there's 42 in the game. I won't probably won't like show every single one, but we'll definitely be getting enough to get the important things that we'll be definitely talking about a bit later on. So there are two carps in this lake. That's the other one. Uh, and there, there are another two, but they're underwater and you can't kill them until, uh, until you can dive. Uh, and maybe you can kill them if you like really, really, really try for like 20 minutes or so. But um, yeah, we'll just get the two that are above the water, and then we'll we'll leave the other two for for later on when we do have the uh, the dive ability, which will be uh, closer to the end of the game. Anyway, this is a merchant here that actually sells things for scales. Uh, what we want from this guy is the the right mask fragment. So we're gonna we're gonna wait until we have seven. We're gonna leave this and not really do anything at the moment. Once we've got seven, we'll probably come back here. Uh, but we, we will be getting a lot more than seven, don't worry about it. Because there there are a lot of other things that we would like to, to get with uh, carp scales. And that's not the only merchant in the game. But um, okay, okay, this is actually the first time I've played the game today. So I'm a bit tired, just woke up. So combat skills probably won't be at its, at its best. But yeah, carp scales are actually quite important on the, obviously not for story um, reasons, but for secondary reasons and stuff like that. There's a few more enemies down here. 
somehow he, I mean, I'm not sure if he detected us or not, I guess it was because of the guy behind us. But, you know, oh god, dogs, I hate dogs. Uh, firecrackers are kind of good against dogs, it kind of stuns them because firecrackers, crookers, firecrackers do have more range than it may seem. But, um, I'm not really sure what the best way of taking dogs out is. Uh, probably if you get the flame vent, uh, tool, that will be getting very soon. I think we picked the item up down here, didn't we? Uh, yeah, we did. There's some coins there, though. Take those, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, that's it. Uh, like we said, there's two more carps under the water in that area, but we can't really get them until we've got a dive ability. So, yeah, let's move on to the next, um... To the next idol. Uh, this area just here, this um, corridor up here with these enemies, is actually not a bad place to farm very early game. Like if you if you fancy farming some items and whatnot and some XP, maybe skills to get some skills. Uh, this this um, place here isn't too bad. At all. Oh god, that that attack is so unpredictable. Like out of all the attacks in the game, I think that's the most unpredictable attack. Like one of those like is that guy, the guy with the like the very basic guy, the guy that's coming at me now, he can actually kick sand in your face and it will completely like stun you like it did just then and my god that has gotta be like, I, I still don't really know how to predict it, especially when maybe if he's on his own, but like even then like it's really really quick. So um yeah. <clears throat> uh before we go this way we're gonna go over here to the left. Uh, if you are just interested in exploration, uh, I am uploading a, another walkthrough, which is actually more advanced at this point than this one. That is just running around, uh, getting all the items from the level, like no enemies, the level is empty, and we're just picking up all the items. So if, you, if you're like, if you know how to like finish the game, you're not really interested in tips, you're not really interested in, in watching me killing the enemies or anything like that. Um, then you can go and check it out. I'll probably leave it in the description. Uh, but obviously, the, you, like this one is more of a detailed walkthrough, as the name may suggest. So uh, there's a few items around this area. There's actually an item behind this little hut over here, just here. Echo sugar. Like I said, this is kind of like a start, um, a start game, like really early game area. So if you do, if you have killed the horse boss, like me not to get ambushed by this guy if you have killed the horse boss like me then this area is probably not going to be too difficult at least not yet there there are a few difficult parts of it uh, coming up very soon but for now i don't think there's any more items i think the only item was in that building yeah i think we're good i think we're good for items <clears throat> right i believe we can eavesdrop on somebody around here there, there was definitely some people you could eavesdrop on but it wasn't really that um that useful. We are about to pick up the uh, next tool which is the flame vent which is uh, the tool that I mentioned that could be very very good for for fighting the ogre if you are stuck on the ogre and you want to come here first uh, go ahead and do that it's actually a really good idea. I mean that's kind of remember just before the chained ogre there's some like you can eavesdrop and um they're talking about fire. Uh, I kind of think they they mean this. Like I think they mean the fire vent. I don't think they mean the firecrackers, to be honest. But I, I could be wrong. I guess where the flame vent is probably in the flames. Uh, we'll, we'll be picking all the items up in a second. I'm just uh, I always like to clear the area before picking up all the items. Did we kill that guy? Or no? Okay. There are also certain enemies in this uh, in this area that um, oh god, dogs are so unpredictable, or wolves or whatever you want to call them. Is there any more? Yeah, there's a guy over there that's half drunk. I don't think he's going to be doing much to us, but you gotta be careful. You can never be too careful in this game. Flame barrel. That's what we're looking for. That is going to be the flame type damage tool that we've kind of been looking for since that clue before the ogre, even though we already killed the ogre, uh, just for the guide's sake, just to keep it all in proper order. Already we will be revisiting areas once we get certain things and NPC quests. Uh, I think we got everything, I don't think there's any items in any buildings, there was one behind here that we already picked up, and I think we're good to go. 
I really feel I do remember like when I'm editing or something that I did like just completely forget an item. Uh, I will come back and get it or at least mention it on the next episode. Depends how important it is. I think we're good at the moment. Uh, yeah, there's more dialogue right now here. Now here we've got a big passageway with four doors. So the first thing we're going to do is go all the way to the end. This is actually going to take us all the way back to the to the first big corridor. You know the place where I said that it's pretty good to farm. Uh, this is actually going to take us all the way back to the idol. So if, if you are low on healing items or anything, uh, make sure you just go down there. Rest up. I mean these enemies we haven't even touched anyway yet. So uh, so we've got four doors here to each side. So let's start with this one. It's going to just, there's no enemies here. Well, I mean... There are my mortal enemies, the chickens. Like, I think I believe the only time we've died on this uh, particular playthrough has actually been by. I mean, we didn't die completely, but you know, we we it when when it introduced the resurrect thing, it was actually by a chicken. So I'm not sure why I'm feeling so confident. But yeah, it's just gonna be a bunch of these, and here we go. Again. I just do. Like, I know all you gotta do is block, but I just I just you see a chicken. And it's not like, oh yeah, I'll block because it's a goddamn chicken. Like when you see these type of enemies, it's just like, yeah, attack these goddamn. Uh, there's an item in here. Uh, there's an item near the well that we just picked up. And I think there's also an item on this roof that you can just jump and then grab onto. In this nest over here. And for this little door, uh, we're done. Next door. Over here. Oh, where do you come from? It, I think this guy must have came through the shortcut or something. That guy's not normally there. Must be the shortcut. There's gonna be a few enemies here. I'll oh, watch out for these axe enemies. Like these axe enemies, the ones with the armor and helmet on. Like you can't really interrupt their attacks. Like they they will barely ever stagger. So just just keep that in mind. Like there you go. See, so just gotta wait for them to attack. Kind of reminds me more of a Dark Souls enemy than uh, Sekiro. Because you can't really stagger them, you've got to kind of wait for them to attack, then you've got to attack kind of thing. So let's open this door to get another tool, which is going to be incredibly useful. It's probably one of my favorite tools, which is the axe. And um, we're actually going to go back and and actually get that from the, from the temple after picking this item up. Because we kind of want that, like it's going to save you a lot of trouble to finish this particular area or this, uh, you know, Hirata. So we're going to, we're going to, where the hell did that other enemy come from? Like, you couldn't have come through the shortcut because uh, we already killed everybody. I don't know, it's kind of weird. Must have left an enemy around there somewhere. Anyway, so let's go back to the temple because uh, the axe is going to save us a lot of trouble against a certain type of enemy in Hirata. And obviously a lot uh, more enemies in the game. But there are particularly a few enemies coming up uh, where we are now that can be incredibly annoying without the without the axe, but incredibly easy with the axe. I feel like this game is just know what to use in the right moment, and that can be a huge difference in between very annoying and very easy. So let's... um. Go and fit this uh, loaded axe and the flame vent, of course. Uh, flame vent, I've never really, um, I've never really been much of a. I mean, never really found much use of the flame vent, uh, apart from obviously if you are going to use it against enemies like the chain dog. I think it's probably quite good against dogs as well. But you know, let's go and equip the loaded axe. And uh, this guy did actually give us a new skill tree, which, if I'm not mistaken, is the skill tree just to do with. Um, just to do with tools. Uh, we could go ahead and this is pretty cool. Um, chase and slice. But also grappling hook attack is also nice. So you, you can like um, attack into an enemy midair after grappling which is kind of cool. Especially on enemies like bosses that you are allowed to grapple onto. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually probably save them. Like the reason I'm saving the points is uh, for a very specific reason that will probably be discussed in next episode. But you know, don't worry, like it's nothing incredibly important. Go ahead and um, go ahead and spend them yourselves if you like. The the chase and slice a skill is very, very good. But uh, there's just like a, 
I'll explain it over the top. Like next episode, we're going to come across an NPC that if we've got a skill tree maxed out, he's actually going to give us another skill tree. Uh, so I'm just saving it because soon we will be getting a um a pretty like straightforward skill tree to max out, like one of the easier ones to max out, and I want to max out that one out. However, like even if you don't get the skill tree by maxing it out, you will be able to get those skill trees a bit later on in the game if you do happen to miss it. So like I said, don't worry if you do want to go and spend them. Um, anyway, so what are we doing? I came to the wrong place. Let's uh, teleport quickly over to the next bonfire. Uh, the, the areas in this game will seem incredibly big, uh, like the first time you visit. But the more you play it, this is kind of like Dark Souls as well. Uh, the smaller the area will seem but the first time you visit an area every single area seems absolutely gigantic and they are like um, don't get me wrong they're not tiny uh, specifically like um the outskirts area like the outskirts area i still find incredibly big like especially for the like the first area or like you know without counting the tutorial area but, like um the outskirts is a very big area no matter how much you play it but for the most of the other areas, they're not like incredibly big. Like Hidato isn't huge, even though it, w it will seem like it the the first time you play it. Anyway, remember we still do have two more doors, but um, the good thing about these two doors is that uh, there's not actually there's not actually enemies in the doors. We've got another one of these incredibly annoying axe enemies. There we go. Uh, obviously, the, we can eavesdrop on a lot of people that we haven't really been eavesdropping on, but they're very basic, either like story-based things or lore or just tips, but you know, they're not incredibly important if you know what you do. So this guy, I'm not sure if you recognize this guy, this guy is actually Anayama, the merchant that, you remember the guy we gave 50 sen in, in the outskirts? This is actually him in the past. So if you do happen to go and kill him now, which you definitely shouldn't for whatever reason you would kill him, I do not know. Uh, don't kill him now because he will not be there as a merchant. Okay, so so don't do that. Just just a quick side note. Even if he he seems rather a nine, I mean he doesn't even seem too a nine. Maybe a bit, but you know, just don't kill him because uh, he will not be there in the future. And it's actually quite a long NPC side quest that we'll be doing a bit later on. Um. Pick that item up there. A lot of people actually don't pick that item up for some reason. I'll be explaining what item that is at the moment. Because uh, on, on my 100% item walkthrough, um, a lot of people thought I missed that item and it's not the case. But we'll be getting to that in a bit. Uh, so jump over the wall where the enemies were. And there's actually not going to be any enemies here. They're actually all good. Or, or like civilians. And um, there was definitely a few items here. You can talk to people if you want, just to like get an idea of what's, of kind of what's going on in this area. There's definitely at least one item here, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe he even gives you something. Yeah, okay, he gives you an antidote powder. Well, I can't remember if there's anything else out over here or not. Is that not? Maybe it's just the uh, powder. I don't know. Was there something on one of the roofs? Sometimes it's just it's just hard to remember everything. Like I'm I'm trying to remember level by level like every single item and I'm bound to screw up sooner or later. Uh, maybe there's no nothing else. Maybe it's just the antidote powder. I remember you get something from here, but it must have just been the antidote powder, I guess. I don't think there's any holes in the walls or roofs. No, nah, okay, we good. We good, okay. So it is time to make sure you've got the loaded axe equipped because uh, it's shield enemy time. So these guys are incredibly annoying to get a hold of if you haven't got the axe. It's not impossible, you can actually run around. I'm going to show you an example of that, I'll just take one out, but basically the axe instantly breaks the, uh, instantly breaks the shield. But if you don't have the axe or you just didn't go back, you can just run around like this. It's just annoying, especially if there's other enemies. Like, if it's on its own, you can just do this. Just run around, stay close to its back, and bam. But, um, yeah. Just go and get the axe. <laughs> just go and get the axe, because there will be more of these enemies, and uh, you do not want to be doing that when there's, a, when there's a whole bunch of them. Okay, so here we've actually got a mini-boss, and um, 
There, there is a carp or a fish or whatever with scales in the river or the lake or whatever you want to call it below. But I think it, I think this one's underwater, so we're gonna need the uh, we're gonna need the dive ability. Uh, okay, so the mini boss is this uh, guy with white robes on. This guy can be very hard. Just remember the um, remember the Mikiri. We're gonna be using that quite a lot against this guy. You can get a first um, counter attack if you wait long enough. He should turn it around. So just be patient in the in the flower beds, and he should turn around. There we go, and uh, that's that's a free half health. But um, now you just want to be very careful. I kind of also recommend just running around quickly, killing the rest of the enemies, because uh, if if you want to really concentrate on that guy, this guy has some incredibly good range on him as well. So just be careful of that. Uh, obviously, the reason I didn't kill the little enemies off before is because uh, we wouldn't have got the. Uh, the surprise attack on him, so obviously you wanna you wanna get the surprise attack on him, then take out all the enemies. Now we're gonna now we're gonna see if uh, I really don't think that every single one of his attacks are gonna be Mickey uh, countable. Only the poke uh, thrust attack. I uh, like he does have the um one that makes you jump, so don't think that as soon as that um as soon as that uh, letter appears, it's gonna have to be a Mickey. There, uh, we screwed that one up. Don't press it too early. There we go, and bam. Just make sure you've got that Mikiri counter before this boss, or this mini boss. Incredibly useful. Remember these guys, their uh, poise doesn't really break too easily. You get really overconfident with these little axe guys. Seriously, it's so annoying. There we go, okay. Okay, doing pretty well. Uh, let's make sure we pick up all the items. There's at least one item over here, up here somewhere. And there's going to be one down the bottom. Okay, nice. Nice, nice, nice. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I'm just trying to remember. There's an item up to the left, but that's a bit later on. Make sure you get this idle since uh, we don't really care about the enemies that are behind us. Uh, so we picked up one prayer bead in this area. We are going to get at least two more. Maybe even three. I think it's only two though. Uh, we can jump up to the left. We are actually going to do that and come back around to get a few surprise attacks on on these uh, people. Now there's another carp in this part of the lake as well. Uh, but I believe he's also underwater. There may be one that's above water but we'll check that out in a second. Almost screwed that up. Uh, Surprise attack off. Right. So easy and yet so like it's so easy to kill these enemies, it's so easy to screw it up as well, it's incredible. And now we're actually above the area, like down there with these enemies is actually the same area we just came from. Actually like remember we just jumped up there. That's the idol we just uh, rested at. So I always like just like to take that route. You get a few surprise attacks and quite a few of these uh, enemies. Right, so here we can either go up uh, go up there. We will be going up there very soon, but first what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up here and grapple on this high ledge with the smoke. And then we're actually gonna be grappling across to where this item is. Picking that up. Uh, and we're gonna forget about those for a second. We're actually gonna be uh, falling on top of those guys in a second. So I, like I said, I believe this, oh no, this actually, is that underwater? I think this one, no, th there is one underwater, but there's also one on top of the water, so that's kind of nice. Do we, uh, these, these actually escape, like if they do happen to escape, don't worry about it too much, you can just, uh, you, you can just wait around the area like for five or ten seconds and they will, they will respawn like right in front of your eyes. Anyway, we're going to go up here and, uh, just be prepared, we are going to be finding a bit of a mini boss. It's not actually a mini boss, it's actually only got one health bar. But he can be pretty tough. Um, we're actually, once we beat this mini boss, we're going to get another um, tool. So, you know, you can see why it's uh, recommended to come to this area. Because, like, not only do we get a loaded bunch of stuff, beat another boss, but we get, like, three more tools. And that is uh, incredibly good. Uh, this guy, like, if he does his very long combo. Just seeing if he does. Like, this guy can be very tough to beat at this point in the game, so be careful. This guy, you probably want to come back. Like, if it's your first time playing the game, you probably want to come back and fight this guy. 
Uh, use your firecrackers, they're incredibly uh, good at stunning so this guy. Dodge that. There is one long combo that he's got, I'm not sure if he'll do it to me. There there we go. At the end, we want a Mikiri, but uh, wait, never mind. <laughs> that didn't work out. Uh, the thing is, like, doing it this early, um, we don't have much... Uh, we don't have much um, posture, um, posture. So if we if we do screw up a few parries, which we're probably bound to in that long combo, uh, you're not going to be able to do the Mikiri counter at the end because you just you'll be worn out. Uh, you can obviously get out of it by dodging at the end, but just be careful. This, like this guy is tough, especially at this level, uh, especially with your posture. Because normally, even if you had a bit more posture, you would just be able to defend that long count or that long combo, and then Mikiri, uh, the poke attack at the end. But I, I made the mistake of trying to do it without any posture, and that instead of just dodging out of the way. So that's another tool. Take his gold. Thank you very much. That's another tool, which is the Mist Raven, which is pretty good. We'll be getting to that soon. And re this is actually remember we jumped up the ledges where the smoke is, jumped across to the item, jumped in the water. This is actually the other path, and we're actually going to be able to get a nice little um, death blow on a few of these, or at least one of them. But uh, it, it's kind of very useful because these guys with the arrows. Or the bow and arrow is incredibly annoying on this game sometimes, like especially when there's like four of them together up there. Like their their rate of fire is actually pretty bizarre sometimes. It's kind of it's kind of really random sometimes. Like sometimes their rate of fire is not that great, but other times their rate of fire is just absolutely out of order. Right. So for this bridge, we want to kind of this. We want to actually try and run past the the giant. Kill every little guy around here. Make sure you've got the axe ready, because we are going to be using that for the uh, for the shield guys. Remember, just axe and then R1, and you should get the iframes. Like, don't worry about too much about the giant, because the when when you're doing the death blow, you do get a load of iframes. Now you just want to you can try and counter him. You can try and um not do that. It's up to you. I, I don't really have a particular preferable way of taking these guys out actually it's probably why I screw it up so much and that's a count that, that's a just about a parry I wasn't really sure if I wanted to parry that or or dodge but I, I did end up parrying it and then get him pick up this item and now we are going to meet a pretty important NPC we are going to meet we are going to meet our father owl and uh, you want to talk to him and he will give us uh, the hidden temple key without this you will not be able to fight the boss so that's actually gonna cave in uh, behind us if, if you go to an idol I believe that fire disappears so you can just walk in as usual because if not I don't think you can get back up here and from here you want to try and uh, grapple across here don't worry if you do happen to fall down uh, you can uh, grapple up from the river below to this platform just here so if you fall don't worry about it too much right so in this area you want to be careful take this guy out now down to the left down to the left uh, before we go too far there's actually an item uh, hidden here there's a possession balloon get that Right, so for these next enemies, uh, you kind of really want to try and bait them out. Uh, I would almost say that it's probably worth going back to the idol if you're low on uh, health uh, items because these guys can be pretty tough. There are going to be two thrust enemies. They're not mini bosses. They only got one health bar, but you really want to be careful with these guys. Like, try and do the Mikiri, um as much as possible, but don't. Don't get too carried away because not all of their attacks are going to be thrust attacks. Most of them will, but they do obviously also have the um, the attacks that you have to jump over. Kind of like the last mini boss we fought, but these aren't actually going to be mini bosses. Uh, once you once you get the Mickey and the timing down, it's really not too bad. But um, the, these guys can be tough. Like don't 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 underestimate these guys. Okay, these can, guys can be incredibly tough. If you, especially if you don't use the Mikuri properly. But anyway, once you do kill them, I think you're going to get a big purse of coins, which is absolutely great. Uh, there we go, the Bo Bojan one, which I believe is like a thousand or not. 
We've also got some pellets and some sugar and some meal. So uh, remember that item beside the merchant in the past, um, Anayama, there was like an item where I said that a lot of people miss this or think they missed it or don't know how to get it. Uh, somebody actually claimed that I missed it on the 100% item walkthrough. Uh, when you get here, you can actually see an item the other side of the bamboo through these, this little gap here. That is that item. That is how you get that item. You, you get that item by jumping over the wall near Anayama. A lot of people were kind of asking me about that on the other video. So I just wanted to clear that up, that that is that item. So we're just going to come back to where we were before. There's going to be an enemy over here, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, there he is. Just use it. Well, I mean, I'm not even sure if you can backstab that guy. I don't think you really can. Uh, make sure, you know, you can get the backstab on the uh, shield guy if you want, if you don't want to, uh, like, use the axe or whatnot. Remember, the axe guy is quite hard to um, break their stance or their poise, so you want to be careful of that. But uh, these enemies shouldn't be too bad if you've got them down. There we go. Right, now we are coming to the almost to the end of this uh, area anyway. Like I said, it is not a tiny area, even if you do know you're doing, but it's not a huge area. It will definitely seem a lot bigger the first time. Watch out for that guy to the right, by the way. The guy that we just killed, he'll try and ambush you. Jump up here just by keeping, keep tapping X. Uh, I think there's only gonna be one item here before this next idol. So go here and this is actually going to be not the last idol, but almost the last idol. I mean, the next idol we get to is just going to be uh, exclusively for the boss battle, so we're pretty much near the end now. There's going to be a little section over here with a load of enemies, then we're going to fight a mini boss, and then we are going to pretty much be there. Now, here I recommend not screwing around too much and just pretty much just you know don't 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 worry too much about the roofs. There's really not much point. As soon as you jump on one, the rest of them. The rest of them are going to find you anyway, or going to see you, so uh, you can probably get like away with one, um, one death blow from the roof. Uh, obviously, if you just want to skip all the enemies, then that's up to you. But I kind of do recommend killing uh, like most of these enemies, because there is a mini boss very close by, and sometimes if you do take too long on the mini boss, these guys will actually start to uh, get fairly close and uh, actually can screw you over. The guys with the boring hours are the worst, you need to try and focus on them because they're, they're just incredibly annoying sometimes, especially when you're trying to fight somebody like an axe guy like this where his poise isn't uh, exactly easily broken and you're getting smacked by him, you're getting arrows in the back and it's just it's not nice, so always uh, try and focus those um, arrow guys. I know it's, it can be annoying to try and take these guys out every time you're going to fight the main, uh, the mini boss, but still. Uh, and in this big building, there's actually only two items along with a few enemies, maybe. Or maybe the enemies are the ones from outside, I'm not sure. Maybe there's no enemies in here. Divine Confetti is quite good early game, that's quite uh, rare. Uh, especially if you want to fight a Headless or a Shishimen Warrior. So make sure you pick that up. And I believe that's it for items. There's going to be one more over here in the in the lake. Now you can go around the left but what I prefer to do is uh, just go straight in because if you talk to this guy right here he will actually help you out. Now this guy is not going to do like tons of damage or anything like that he's more of a, just a distraction because if okay mate all right all right that was uncalled for. That guy doesn't normally do that. Uh, but if you if you like keep your distance this is really not going how I expected uh, but normally if you keep your distance from the uh, boss or the mini boss n where is he? I was getting destroyed by these guys. Normally this doesn't actually normally happen. Normally if you run in and take the small guys out, uh, the my te the teammate will actually try and distract the mini boss. There we go. If you, if you can keep your distance from the mini boss, then hopefully he will lock onto your teammate and just... He will wreck him. Like, the, the NPC won't do much damage at all. Like, none at all. It's actually just getting destroyed at the moment by, uh, by this little guy. But, um... Yeah, it's just a distraction. He is useful. Like, don't get me wrong. He, he doesn't do anything, like, damage-wise, but he is very incredibly useful for uh, just distracting the little guys. Like, firecrackers are good against this guy. This guy is tough. Like, I, I actually normally have quite a lot of trouble against this guy. Like, I, I find this guy to be quite a big difficulty spike, if you will, especially if you're, if, if you're going for, 
uh, this place um, before fighting the horse boss. Like, this guy is tough. Like, I would say this guy's probably even harder than the actual boss of the area, like the main boss, which we're about to find uh, very soon. It may, it may be just be my personal um, playstyle that has trouble against this guy, I don't know. But uh, he's just so relentless and he's got so much different um, uh, attacks. Different ways to dodge, different stuff. And one of the annoying things about this little this mini boss particularly is that you can't uh, get a good head start when you can't like get a death blow on him at the start to get him down to half health. Thing is like also on this game, not like uh, unlike Dark Souls, not only do you have to learn their moveset, like like on Dark Souls where you learn their moveset and you kind of just dodge it and whatever. But on this you've got to not only learn their moveset but learn the exact rhythm because there's more of a rhythm game when it comes to parrying. And because like something like this is so much different than like the other, the last boss or whatnot that we've fought. Like, even if you have played the game quite a lot and know, like, the moveset, like, that we screwed it up. Uh, chances are that you're probably actually going to die once or twice against, uh, certain enemies. Just because you're, like, you can, like, maybe even no-hit an enemy or a boss, like, once you're really used to him because you get into the rhythm. But once you've, like, just gone through the game and, like, been fighting a few other enemies or bosses with different rhythms... Uh, it doesn't matter how much, well, I mean, it does matter, but like, unless you played an insane amount, like, you're going to still be, you're going to feel somewhat rusty against certain bosses, just because of how different the rhythm is, and because of he's going, okay, okay, that's, that's, that's nothing to do with the rhythm, that guy's just going fucking ham on me, that, that, this guy's, this guy's just pushing his luck, that's just me being bad, that was nothing to do with the rhythm. Uh, there's going to be an item in here, so make sure you pick that up. And uh, yeah, we're actually really, really close to the to the final boss of this area, finally. Uh, but before we fight the final boss, if we want to like stick to the left in this uh, big building, because there's going to be a few items. And apart from that, there's actually going well. Apart from the enemies, obviously, like there's just never enough, is there? Like, come on, I just literally got past a mini boss. I don't know why I can't fight these guys now. I guess I'm just over, like, underestimating them so much. Especially, like, after you've just killed a boss, you're like, yeah, whatever. Uh, there's actually going to be a, uh, a, what, a fake wall, I guess you could call it here. A spinny wall. With a few nice little items in it. And I believe one's going to be, I can't remember if it was a gourd or a seed. I think it was a gourd. So, this is actually going to be our third gourd we pick up in this area. So, in the end, I think it was three and not, and not four. But three is great. Free is absolutely amazing. Sometimes these chests, like, they don't bug out forever, but sometimes they'll actually bug out for a bit where you can't pick up the item inside. But if that does just, just happen, just don't move and wait. Because sometimes if you move, it makes it worse. Anyway, that is all there is in here. This is going to be this NPC, just for the story's sake. Uh, and actually, there's going to be one more item here. And finally, the final idol, which is going to be the one that we're going to be fighting this uh, this boss from. So if we die, we're going to respawn at this one, and we're going to run straight back in there. Kill this guy. Uh, and we kind of want to talk to this NPC here. Um, he'll actually give us a bit of uh, some seeds, which are actually kind of useful. Snap seeds are useful for this next boss. I would actually go as far as to say they're useful enough to equip. Like, they're not like fire against the chained ogre useful which is like incredibly useful don't get me wrong but it's definitely doable without them and i guess this is doable without it but they are really useful they save you from one pretty powerful attack so i'd go ahead and equip you should have six by now if you've been following the guide you get the other five where the great serpent is the first time i'm going to skip the cutscene just to you know not spoil too much but so this e this boss isn't too bad it's got two phases, even though it looks like it's only going to have one, but uh, From Software like to do that in this game quite a lot. Uh, really, you shouldn't do what I did there. Don't, don't try and dodge. Just, just try and parry. Don't, don't screw it up like I did. This boss is really easy if you parry correctly. Especially the first phase. I mean, though the phases don't change too much, the first and second phase are very similar, just with a few different attacks. 
She's not actually jumping as much as I would like to like her to be though. Normally she jumps like oh, there we go finally. Uh, that you want to just dodge. Well you could parry that if you want, it's completely up to you. And then there's another one, that one, which is a grab attack. You definitely want to dodge that. Do not try anything else. Sometimes she'll just jump away, then you just want to run at her. Like she, she can do three things when she jumps. And anything else you just want to keep parrying and uh, yeah. If she jumps away, just run at her, attack until she parries. And try and parry everything. We're not doing great. But like I said, I'm not the best at this game. It's actually been a while since we've fought this boss. This boss was actually... I'd say it's one of the easiest bosses of the game. Even though, like, obviously if it's your first time fighting her, you're, like, no, none of the bosses are like, oh, uh, this is easy, like, the first ever time. And the ones that do seem easy the first time have clearly got more than one phase that you're not really aware of. But this one's really not too bad, mainly because the damage she does isn't too bad and you, you're not going to like just die out of nowhere like on a lot of other bosses. Because even if you do screw up, you do get plenty of time to heal on this boss just because of the, her little damage. And, and really she's not really got much attacks. It's either jump, you can do three things when she jumps and the rest of it's just parry, parry, parry. And on second phase it's almost more of the same, except that you will want to watch out for the like the little ghosts and you I do recommend using the snap seeds as soon as possible when the ghosts come out because if, if you leave the ghosts alive she will have this like pretty powerful attack and apart from everything else she does uh that was a jump that was a jump to be honest I didn't even remember she had that attack it's been such a long time since I fought her okay so this is where you want to use the snap seeds and that's not the snap seeds my bad screwed the wrong button up because uh, the thing is, like, you can change the uh, button order. There's actually, a, like, a, a few, very few people know this, but if you actually go into the Sekido menu, you can actually uh, change the button mapping out. And I did have it changed at one point, and that's why I'm pressing the wrong button sometime. But at the moment, it's just default. And it's okay, like, I don't mind the default buttons, they're not too bad. Just want to watch out um, on this face just to not screw up too many parries, because if you block too much, Stuff's gonna go bad. That's a jump. That's a jump. I always like to keep the snap seeds equipped in my uh, quick menu on this boss. Like, I think this is a game where, for the most part, on the uh, quick menu, you just want the main gourd and the pellets for every single part of the game. Except when you, like, a specific enemy or specific boss that you would like to use something. Okay, here we go, just watch out, just use the uh, snap seeds, get rid of those. If, if you don't get rid of those, they'll, she'll actually like make them disappear eventually herself, but she'll do like a, a quite a big bad attack, which isn't like incredibly hard to dodge. I think you can just run around and get over it, but uh, I, I'd much prefer to just um, use the snap seeds because it's not, there are, there are, there's like one or two other bosses that you could use the snap seeds against to kind of cheese them out, or not cheese, but like be incredibly useful. But um, I think the the best use you're going to get out of Snap Season pretty much the whole game is you know, against this boss, so don't... Oh my god, I keep screwing up the jump attack. I keep screwing up the jump attack. We could still... Like, like we're screwing up pretty damn bad here. Like, out, out of all the bosses we've fought so far, this is definitely the biggest screw up. Uh, and we, we should still be about to do it first go, I hope. I, I, I just I just watch out for this. Oh no, that is such bad timing. If they do sp if if they're really spread out um the the phantoms, you do wanna move around and probably use more than one snap seed. Oh, we're probably gonna have to use a revive at this point. Though her posture is uh, pretty screwed up right now. There we go. She's dead. We didn't even need to revive him. And we played horribly, like really badly against that boss. But uh, not not too hard of a boss if you know what you're doing. And if you don't know what you're doing, as you can see. And that is the end of the memory of Hirata. Now we pr 
probably we should be coming back here i will try and come back here for one of the specific endings uh a bit later on but we're obviously not going to be talking about that until until quite a lot later but yeah this is the end of hidata estate memory we i'm pretty sure we did everything like i said if i do happen to come up with something that we missed or whatever i at least mention it or maybe even come back and do it, it depends how important. But like as far as important things, we we haven't missed anything. I don't think we've missed anything, even if it's not important, but uh, you never know. After this, we got the secure droplet. So uh whatever like the secure droplet is actually did we did we fit the feather? I can't remember if we fit the feather. No, we didn't, okay. There we go. Uh the secure droplet is um incredibly useful uh, a bit later on that will let us get a third revive so like i really do recommend going to do hidata estate for a lot of things like we got free uh gourds or free seeds not sorry not seeds uh beads uh we obviously got the memory now we can uh enhance our uh, attack power which is great for the start of the game we got free new tools like go and do that as soon as possible like i said a lot of people like to even do that before the ogre just to get the flame uh weapon so yeah anyway we're gonna uh, leave this episode here guys next episode we should be doing a sheena castle which is probably gonna be a long one so yeah hopefully this was helpful guys if it was please go like and subscribe i see you next time guys if this guide was helpful please consider joining as a member by using the join button or using the link in the description. This will support the channel, allowing me to get even more games to do, even more video guides. Thanks for the support. Take care, guys.